or that's that rotation. That's that's where that. Uh, oh, 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 here I gotta pull up the name. Sub taller <laughs> joint motion. motion. Yeah. Okay, so I have no idea what sub taller joint motion is. I, that was all new to me. I this was... is this is where we take our PSA level three pens and just put them in our pockets. Pockets. Yeah. And yeah. we just talk about skiing. Yeah. All right. So Carrie and I skied all day on this day, and we shot a ton of video. 46 minutes in fact and I went through it and I was trying to edit it down to something smaller and manageable but there was so much good content in there I didn't want to get rid of it and so consider this more of a podcast about ski coaching and ski teaching on hill in real life. <laughs> what Dylan? Skiing with a ski dad. Everything that we went over and talked about that we spent all day skiing through it's just it's hard to separate it into like one aspect because it tied together with so many different things mm -hmm. and so no it was and that's what the beauty of teaching when you're with somebody all day long you can ski it all day long yeah kind of what we did skied well, and talked it yeah we skied and talked and filmed yeah. as much as we could and that's what it is yeah all right Enjoy. What's up gang? Today I am skiing with Carrie Oaks. Carrie is a ski teaching mentor of mine and Carrie and I share back and forth a lot of videos about ski teaching and ski technique. And lately we've been looking at a lot of videos about moving your ankles in skiing. So today Carrie and I are out here trying to give our version of how to use your ankles, how to ski with the ankles, what that means to us. Did you see in that Australian video that the guy was doing the suck switch where he's going yeah. Which I think that suck switch is, is it's the Austrian or Australian style. Yeah. Where I think it's more here, here, here. You know, the top of the, the top of the turn is Yeah. Oh, you are. Hopefully this can help you at home improve your skiing as well. So in the PSA spirit of things, we're going to go through this in a static, simple, complex kind of situation. And we already did our static part where we got between the chairs down at the lodge and started moving our ankles through the flow of the turn. And now we're going to go to our simple part of the video where I have these silly little skis that I picked up at a ski swap. And I think I'm going to be able to feel my ankles and show the ankle movement through skiing a lot easier on these skis than I could on a real ski. So Carrie and I are gonna do a couple runs on these bad boys, show some good ankle movements, feel our ankles moving, and then we'll move into some real skis and do some real skiing. Good, let's do it. All right. Ready? Awesome. Let's run it. Then you make a couple turns and all of a sudden they like feel like they're working and I don't know, I mean, they're fully tuned. They're slippery, they're super slippery because it feels like there's too much base bevel on. Yeah. So it's really all you controlling them. And and, and the, to keep them smooth, like it's easy to go out and hit turns, but then they wobble. To keep them smooth, you gotta control the energy and the style through the ankles to be able to Come through and I like to run like a flick. Like I come in here and flick, flick, flick. flick. Where yeah. the Aussie style is come in and flick, flick, flick at the bottom. Right at the end of it. Right at the end of it. Instead of at the top. And I call that the suck switch. Yeah. Because they flick the ankles, suck switch, suck switch. Yeah. Where I like to flick them in. Yeah, as and you come up, it's like. It... Yeah get more done at the top of the turn yeah. and get the ankle turned over. That yeah. way I'm edging across the hill. Well, I feel like it gives you a lot more versatility and if you need to change mm -hmm. what how you want to end the turn mm -hmm. or you can go anywhere with it when you're already set up up here. Yes. 
is how I feel about it. Versus coming in and relying on that last minute maneuver yeah. to finish it all the way off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's cause at the bottom of the turn, if you're already set up here and you've got that out of the way, and if you, you can change whatever you need to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can bring it further across the hill, or you can let it go down the, down hill, the hill, release yeah. it into the next turn. Yeah. Drift it. Yep. Totally. Yeah, it's too bad that they didn't catch on more with teaching. Back to talk about retro, the GLM, where you start people with GLM. Really graduated length method. That goes okay. way back from... Um, Never heard That's of. how they used to teach. They would start really short and go longer, longer, longer on skis. Oh, yeah. So... Totally makes sense. That's what these would be, you know, great. Yep. Because well, it still is a ski. Weren't these developed as a teaching ski? Yeah. As a tool? Yeah. And it just never, never caught on. People can't have that many skis in their equipment. No. It's just too much. Yeah. I think it's too much for rental shops or yeah. even from the, the ski school aspect of what do you put people on? Uh, and then how do you change them out? Have them show up on their own skis and then take them away from them and say, no, no, I got something better yeah. for you. Yeah. Do this instead. Yeah. So it was just another moving piece that I think was the management aspect of it. Well, I'm following that technique teaching Bryce to ski. Yeah. We have two pairs of 70s. Yeah. Because my dad and I bought 70 length skis at the same time and just ended up with two pair. Yeah. I have a pair of 80s, a pair of 90s, and now he's on the 90s and I'm looking for a pair of 100s, but I have another yeah. a 110 on top of that ready to go, but it's just a little too long. Yeah. And I move them around on the skis to just get them more comfortable yeah. and, you know, build build the skier and not just have them get comfortable on that, that ski. ski. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's working good. Oh, I And it's it's the whole philosophy is like just to keep moving around on the skis and then he got pretty parallel on the shorter ones and then yeah. and then he actually I could see him getting too fast on the eighties. Yeah. And the skis just weren't holding. And then I put him on the nineties, which he was nervous about, but right away he started skiing better stronger, yeah. faster, and once he figured out he was faster on him, now he loves him. Yeah. Do you, ever, do, you ever bump him uh, do you ever bump him back? Or yeah. The 80? Yeah. Yeah, but I haven't been able to do it since I got him in the 90s. Like, I had, a, I went from the 80s to the 70s for a day. Yeah. And got him to do that. Yeah. But I haven't, now that he's on the 90s, we're only two or three days in on the 90s. He's done with the 80s. Yeah, but I got to, well, I re really what I should do is get him all the way back to the 70s. Yeah. Just a really mess with him. And then <laughs> yeah. I have, I have two pairs of 70s. One has a lot of shape and the other's pretty straight. Yeah. And I, I put them on, the, I start them on the straight one, put them on the, the lot of shape one. And he goes, Dad, these turn too much. <laughs> so we could feel it. Yeah. I want to go straight because it's fast. Yeah. Just the short ones again. And then I'll try and roll it into some carbs to get the ink flow. Okay. Anders, you want to say hi to the camera? Hi. I felt like my ankles were really good at the bottom here. Yeah, at the bottom you were really rolling. When over. I was, I was impressed with the skis. I didn't think I didn't really rip them that hard. No, they, they work from... great. Yeah. I'll go throw on the snow blades and show you guys how. Do it. Do dude. it. After you spend like a day on those, you realize how far over you can get your feet. Mm-hmm. But it is really funny when you transition back to your skis. And especially that inside foot, you're used to it being able to just go whoop. Mm -hmm. And you're, but you realize you're moving with what it used to do, to tip over. Oh, you get stuck. You get that yeah. big ski out in front of you, you get stuck because you're thinking you can just whip it around. Bring it in that way. Yeah. And that's why there's so much, uh, so much action 
from the inside foot. Foot, yeah. Like, sometimes people talk about the inside foot leading, which I don't think is a great way to go. Yeah. But it does, in, in a way, it needs to clear the, the old turn, clear it so that it can go over here and It's gotta and go. move out of the way. Because there's, you see a lot of times, especially in the morning, you're carving here, and then the inside ski comes in and almost gets stuck here, mm -hmm. and then you're like, to get yeah, over here. Yeah, they're fighting each other. So you gotta like pull it out yeah. and through. I talk about it as like the the steer wheels for a car, mm -hmm. that that's leading through the turn mm -hmm. and helping create that turn. And the rear wheels are like the drive turns are the traction, but they follow it, follow it along through. Mm -hmm. Too many people, especially if they're back at all, you get that diversion. Sure. Yeah, because they're not pressure in the outside ski because they're leaning onto the inside ski mm -hmm. too early, and then it goes that way, and then you get that the yeah. opposite thing. I was doing that earlier this year. I kept seeing this happen. He thought, no, mm -hmm. but it, it's just and it's a little little slight adjustment. Yeah. Of being back and even this way, just enough where that wants to rail and keep on going, mm -hmm. and you're on your inside ski. Do you ever? feel that outside ankle like where you it's like you bend it a little bit more at the bottom so you feel the tip of the ski like trying to come back at you so it's coming too much no 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 or? not too much but like to that feeling like i yeah. like that feeling that's the feeling of like oh, pulling I love radius it. yeah where you get the outside ankle and you you you, you cock it in yeah, a little extra just... or that's that rotation that's that's where that uh, oh, oh here i gotta pull out the name Sub taller <laughs> joint motion. Yeah. Okay, so I have no idea what sub taller joint motion is. I, that was all new to me. I this was... is this is where we take our PSA level three pens and just put them in our pockets. Pockets. Yeah. And yeah. we just talk about skiing. Yeah. But they, it, I think the sub taller joint motion is that little that extra angle little, of the angle and rotation. Yeah, and that. it's not just a it's not just a, la a lateral straightforward like drive your knee into the front of the boot. Then. No, it's a you well, have to put in, a twist. It's a twist with it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was interesting understanding that, but I would never use that in a lesson. You can't. Ever. No. You it, can't. I mean, it, you can talk about the twist. Yeah, but it's just, I talk about, like, on the left, this, so mm -hmm. all from the lower leg and thinking of the feet turning. Yep. Especially when we're pivoting on the snow, but then taking it onto an edge ski and finishing the turns with it or even. You know, it's this move starting it. Mm -hmm. But most lessons like, I really don't talk much about it because it just. No. You can get them to do it and maybe explain what that sensation is, but you really don't talk much about it. No. Because they don't want to hear it. It's easier to talk about the skis yeah. and tell them, all right, you need to get your. Like, I, if once I start telling people to wash your tails, yeah. I'm the ankles are moving. Yeah. You know, like, so I, I talk a lot about the washing the tails and you know tricking them into yeah that coming across the hill or or getting that rotation coming from the lower leg to that yeah by saying what the ski's gonna do yeah i do a lot of like drifting skidding yeah and and actually flattening the ski people have a hard time flattening it but that's what allows them it loosens it up mm -hmm. so they can get that and then the edge we bring it back in slowly to do any of those things you are using your ankle yeah. But once you start thinking about trying to use your ankle, it locks out. Yeah, but you got you got issues. This will be fun. First run. It. Yeah, I felt like I was just because this was so wobbly, mm -hmm. trying to find that sweet spot of 
getting it over and actually out from underneath me a little bit. Oh yeah, you had a and lot of angles early. Yeah. It looked really good. Oh, good, yeah, mm -hmm. it was, because if I didn't, if you, they didn't like flop or. No, no, there's a ton of baseball ball. Yeah, which is actually really cool. It mm -hmm. was a really cool feeling. And, because I feel like my regular skis probably need a little bit more because they, and they don't really like that sliding or if I try to drift it into a turn and then mm -hmm. edge set, they don't like that. Yeah, They're too tight. Yeah. But it was, I mean, they're fun, but it was weird at first that. It's almost like yeah. getting on a slack line where early you're jittery. Yeah. And then you settle into it and find that like control, that like fine, mo fine muscle memory. Yeah, yeah. And you can calm them down a little bit. And I think, uh, you know, on these, you really, it's easy to get a lot done early. Yeah. Because there's not a lot of ski to get out there and caught up. So you really can do really the, early on yeah the quick move with your ankle get it whipped around and then just stand on it right through that's where the balance comes in that's yeah. where it's a little bit tougher yeah a little wobbly there yeah and i felt like it did especially starting out i really wanted them keeping them underneath me and not, not letting them get out and away what's the easiest way to lose ankle tension is to extend them yeah. open your ankle use the foot so like sitting back yeah you lose ankle yeah. But if you keep it under you, keep the feet under you, keeps that ankle engaged. Yeah, and that it doesn't take much. You really feel it. The minute you lose them on this one, mm -hmm. it's, it was, whoa! Yeah. Which is great training because it's easy to get away with it on our regular skis. Yeah, because you can lean back on all that tail yeah. and it supports you and holds you. Whereas this is even a twin tip. So even as you go back, it's not even like you have that last little bit of grip from the tail, yeah. flat yeah. tail. It just goes. It will go all the way out. Yeah. Yeah, I totally wiped out on a patch of ice. You know, and, and I was actually even thinking about that early counter, keeping my feet underneath me, but I just got a little bit back and in. Feet went out to the side. It was a really graceful spin out. Underneath the lift. Same thing. Cruise down on the east, kind of get it dialed in, and then we'll put real skis on. Okay. And then that'll be fine. Watch me. I'm not going to tip over. Oh, you're going to have it right away. Don't worry about it. So one more on that ski. Okay. Yeah, I felt better. Oh yeah. That one. So something I saw at the bottom, down here coming across the flat, you were getting that like ski widening. Oh yeah. Like as you enter the turn, you come over, the skis widen, then come back together. And so I think you want to get your ankle flipped over faster. Faster. Okay. To keep them more matched so that you're not going not wide, wide uh, here yeah but it'll stay here and just snap okay okay yeah. i think sucking that outside leg keeping it more under you relying on more uh knees and ankles okay and then you know let an extension come knees and ankle first then extension okay right versus a lot of times when people want to get angles they want extension yeah but especially on these being so short you got to knee and ankle them over yeah and then extension comes through pressure like the g-forces because you yeah. have to have the centripetal force to get your hip inside yeah and so if you knee an ankle over get the ski bending and then once the ski bends that's where you feel that tip coming back at you back at, and yeah. then you feel the the like like the pressure of the ski coming towards your belly button yeah. then you push back against that while keeping your ankle still a little bit of that twist yep. happening while you're pushing the front of the boot, but you're also trying to twist the ankle. And then from that, as you resist that, you just end up angulating. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't found, 
that feeling like I do on my skis on these yet. <laughs> yeah. But once I can get that feeling, and then with also how quick they respond, mm -hmm. you don't have any extra, there's no extra ski to move around, as we said. No, yeah, you gotta stay in that center spot, mm -hmm. be balanced. So one thing to think about with these is the techie thing. This binding, the topis floats. Oh. So you're pinned at the heel and your whole toe floats. Oh, okay. So your like flex point from the ski is more under your heel here. Mm -hmm. And you know. But that's where my sweet spot where I want it in my boots is right in front of my heel anyway. Your so, your center of mass point. Yeah, when mm. and when I'm solid on my like on an edge, I'm really strong, that strong point is that back of my arch right in front of my heel. Mm -hmm. And so, but they, you don't have, there's not much room there. It's easy to all of a sudden too far back. Sure. Or I'm too far forward and I'm not getting that grip there either. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but it might work once I sort that out. Yeah, so I think Perfect. with this ski, so you got more tip. You got a lot yeah. more tip than tail. Than tail. There's not yeah. a lot of tail here. And, yeah. and it's not just the center point of the ski back, it's actually behind the center point of the mm -hmm. ski because that's where the binding fixes. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna nail it. Okay, so as I'm here, my goal is I want to get starting at the turn, get him both over. Get, get this guy into into this position earlier. Okay. All right, and let this knee, like and now how it's like pinching a little bit. Yeah. That I mean that's your ankle, like that's how you're gonna get that twist into here. Yeah. Is letting this knee pinch down earlier in the turn. Yeah. Right? And then this one still stays clear. Mm -hmm. Right? And then you go long pressure and then you stand up through this one and then get this guy to pinch over sooner. Right there. Yeah. And that's that ankle coming in. Trying okay. to get the shovel of the ski yeah. to act early because we're going for a apostrophe shaped turn more yeah. than a C shaped, C -shaped turn. Shaped, yeah. So you got to get the Early knee and ankle movement going up in here, so you got a good ride phase. Okay. Here. All right. Which, but, and it really was just on the bottom flat where that was happening. Up here, where it was a pitch, you were you were getting the getting early it. knee and ankle. All right. But it was on the flat as you were trying to roll more. Your yeah. ankle roll was was a little. It was a late roll versus still maintaining still the maintain same it. tempo quickness that you need up on the pitch. Okay. All right. I'll do it. Let's do it. That was great. Yeah, that felt better. That, that Let's go felt... switch back. Okay. And and all your turns were like your pitch turns were fantastic, very like dancey, a lot of good ankle. And then down here it was really good. That felt more like my normal skiing down here. Yeah. Okay. I see that nose butter again. Okay. You see what you just butter. did? It was sweet. <laughs> <laughs> <That's soft. laughs> Um, I can keep it going. Well, there you go. <laughs>
go like kind of the same tempo turns and then by that last roll, I'll open it up. So anyway, those guys are asking me about short radius turns. Yeah. And I'm telling them straight up, like, guys, I'm sliding so much of the top of the turn, yeah. which is what we're doing here with the ankles, trying to get the quick yeah. part early. Yeah. But I really run the apostrophe shaped turn. And I was just telling them like, that's what I'm doing. That's where I'm out here. And they just looked at me like I had three heads. Yeah. And they're like, whoa, 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 man. I've read the PSI book and that is a C, sir. Yeah. Like, no, dude, it's, it's yeah, not. No. And, and you get, quick done and then with a short turn obviously edge set and get off of it yeah but there's a even with the edge set and get off of it the edge set and get off of it comes with forward momentum and yeah. so you you get a lot done here set and go and you're still moving that way where one of them thought like the edge set was like the end and i was like no you're still moving it over yeah but that's why like they lock up and then in the gs turn it's even more pronounced where in a gs turn or medium radius or whatever, yeah. you get more done early and you may be able to roll it up and roll the ankles in. This is where Heidi was really good. Like she's yeah. keeping snow contact, but getting more done early. She's keeping the ski light yeah. and then pressure and fall line and through. Yeah. But recognizing that once you do connect with the ski, you ride it for a second. Yeah. And stay on it a little bit longer across the hill. And that's where the, that's the, you know, that's, the technique, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and that's I thought the probably her comfort zone was she a slalom or? Well, actually, I thought she was all slalom, but then I looked it up, and her best results were in GS. I, I thought she was. She was like seventh in the world one year on the GS circuit. Wow. Which yeah, is, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I mean, because I'm so play, you know, play around with all of it. Uh, yeah. I love that feeling of when I'm doing the short turns, or even all of that turns from that, where I get on the shovel Go early, and you can feel the tips hook up and come around. Oh it's yeah. A, it's like grab and come around, but it's not a clean arc. It's a tips grabbing and coming around. Mm -hmm. You are scrubbing it, or you're I think when you can- getting it, but then it's that, they grab, they start to come around, and it's a zing. When you feel that shovel like that, yeah. and when you can get up in there and give pressure to the tip, th that is your ankles. Yeah. You got to do that with your ankles because you can't leverage that from your body and really get that tip to go because once that tip does grab, yeah. that's got to be your ankle. You feel it in the boot yeah. or even you pressure it from the boot to get that shovel going. Yeah. Um, so in your run down here, you were really quick, high tempo early, but then your ride was short. You were you're quick early and then just jumping off of it. Yeah. So run that, go in early with that same thing, but then hold it in coming across. And I call it the ride phase of the turn because in the apostrophe, you got the quick part and then here. Yeah. And so there needs to be a little ride across the hill. And okay. that's where you like, it's a little bit of a lengthening of pressure. Okay. But, it, and your momentum, you're picking, you get it done early, and then you pick that direction. You go across the hill with it, keeping that pressure, and you slowly release it. Now quick again and ride. Okay. And so run that same early quick ankle move. Okay. But add some ride to it. Okay. I think I was trying not to fall on my skis. <laughs> well, I was first run coming off the yeah. little ones. Like your snappiness was, was all there. Okay, yeah. Like it was, it was good. What I think in trying to be snappy with your ankles at the top of the turn, you were being snappy out. Out of the turn, yeah. Okay.
It's a great charge. Okay. It was, it was fantastic. So I think what we just did here is we came out and wanted to talk about ankles, and we did. Hi, Izzy. But we came to the same conclusion, no. like focusing on angles, that we would have no. if we were yes. just going out trying to improve skiing. <laughs> yeah. You know, we kept that focus like through and made sure we were talking about it, but at the end of the day, it's just good skiing is good, good skiing. skiing. Yeah. And it wasn't like you're doing something with your ankle or we need to change something with your ankle. Yeah. It's just we were just be, feeling and talking about it. Yeah. Because I found that in, uh, from a student perspective of somebody who has not had a lot of background in instruction or coaching, mm -hmm. they feel like a stiff boot means a stiff ankle. Mm -hmm. And it's more talking about it with students. It's getting them to loosen it up and understand that it's all the joints moving mm -hmm. and loosening that up and how it connects all the way up. Yeah. With all of it. Yep. So, I think the ankle is one of the first joints that, um, well, it's the one you stiffen up. Yeah. First, when you are on They curl the toes. It's a reflex. Sure. Of being when people are nervous, they curl their toes because mm -hmm. it's a fear no, reflex. Yeah. And then that. The snow the toes. Yeah. And that, that actually opens up the ankle, puts them on their heels, and locks mm -hmm. it out. Yep. And then everything else going up becomes locked out. Yep. And once or, they loosen that and they can feel it, you can see light bulbs. Go. Yeah. Or they lean on the back of the boot, and once they lean on the back of the boot, the ankle's locked out. Yeah. And there's no motion from it from there. Yeah. You gotta have that flex yeah. ankle. <laughs> yeah. And they compensate with other movements. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. hip, hip dump, park and ride. And you do like. So, I don't know if this is true, but I feel like I can control my ankles through my quads. Yeah. Like if I'm flexed with everything, ankle, knee, hips, everything's flexed, and in my athletic stance, I gotta have tension through my quad. Yeah. And a good long run of good, quote unquote, ankle skiing. Yeah. My quads are gonna move. Yeah. Because that's where you're controlling all of them. Yeah. That and the core, always the core. The core is a big thing. Yeah. Or It just helps, for me, I find it keeps me aligned no. with my upper well, body I, well, so that I can, I don't get out of balance, you come back or forward or... Mm -hmm. But then once I start moving on my skis also, that just keeps, this is always engaged. Yeah. So everything else can loosen and activate as needed. Mm -hmm. Well, you gotta be settled. You gotta be like in that, where you're actually relaxed. Yeah. Right? You use the front of the boot to lean on. Yep. And, and and when you're leaning, when pressure is on the front of the boot, you can relax your ankles. Yeah. So I love, sorry, the, the drills are different drills that really work on just movement, creating movement and flow, and then uh, like even just the shuffle, like the shuffle stuff. Right? Sure. Yeah. And I love that because it does activate the ankle. But creating movement and then refining it and becoming more precise with it. Yep. So, a couple different drills like shuffle step, or there's where you take the poles in one hand behind the back to the other hand as you have that transition. And it just creates movement so you're not stuck in a position. And then once you feel that movement and how it affects everything else, then start refining it into more precise moves through your regular turn. Mm -hmm. I find that a lot of those drills are actually to take your mind away yeah. from those parts, like the passing the pole behind your back really doesn't teach you, you know, from a ski racing perspective, yeah. or even a skiing perspective, it doesn't teach you to make the turn better or worse. No. What it does is gets you concentrating on this and doing this like active movement. And the yeah. only way you're gonna do that active movement is if everything settles out underneath you. You can't run that that crappy, locked out, sitting back, or yeah. or even like a non-confident position over the skis if you're fluidly passing something behind your back. To be able to do that, you gotta settle down. Down, yep. And so I call it placebo or placebo yeah. coaching where yeah. you're getting them to do something else 
Yeah. Even especially teaching little kids, right? You get kids in the snow plow, all of a sudden you see that arm moving yeah. or you get the elbow going right or they're like this and you go clap yeah. your hands and they go yeah and, and everything's everything, back yeah you yeah know? and so so many drills yeah there's... are just to take your mind away from what you're actually trying to achieve yeah i think you're right that's what those drills do it gets them thinking of something else so they don't stiffen up trying to do something yeah and and if you're in tune as the teacher enough with what you're trying to get out of it you can do all that stuff yeah but a lot of times people are trying to get specific results or like, okay, you, we're going to fix your ankle by fixing your ankle. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, let's just fix your ankle by like getting your quads engaged. engaged or fix yeah. your ankle by getting your, your hips now over your feet. Feet, yeah. Right? So you get someone to stand up and yeah. get over the boots and now you can deal with their ankle. Now you actually can get a little bit of the, what's it called, dorsiflexion, dorsiflexion yeah. from the ankles because finally you got the hips up and over it. Do you, but, do you specifically talk, did you find you ever talk much about using the glutes? Because no. I feel like most people already overutilize their quads of the average intermediate skier mm -hmm. because they have the either leaning back or two squats. Well, and they're out of shape. And yeah. They don't have the condition. So when the quads do fire and burn, yeah. th they, that worries them. Yeah. Where like, I, when I do like a big top to bottom run, my quads seize up at the bottom. Like, yeah. Cause I'm still using them, but yeah. I'm just aware that that's normal. Normal. It's yeah. okay. That's what I'm, it should feel mm -hmm. like. Yeah. But no, I like to, to, it's very hard to tell someone what muscle to use and then get them to do something. Like if you want someone to, you know, add quad tension, they're going to squat down. Yeah. Or, 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 you know, flex the squat. All right. You know, like yeah. you didn't want this. Yeah. You just wanted that. T so it's a hard thing to get the balance. I don't know. I mean, I do, I've played a little bit with like core tension. Yeah. Like, okay, when you're doing a plank, you could flex the core. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And now you can flex your core 50%. Okay, now you got your core flex 50%, go take your run. Yeah. Keep it flexed 50%. Right yeah. But even that's like mixed results. Like. I'll talk, it was actually um, Wendy Fisher. I skied with Wendy Fisher and Jess McMillan and Ingrid Backstrom down in Portillo. Cool. And it was Wendy Fisher that talked about muffin top. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's a great one. Yeah. The pinch. The, the pinch and stretch, stretch. is yeah. so necessary. Yeah. And because like when you really are laying it over and getting extension, you have to feel that pinch. Pinch. Yeah. Or at least have the core strength to feel the pinch. Yeah. And that's it. I love using it, but, but I use it a lot with my women's group. I'm like, I know you guys work so hard not to have the muffin top, but we're going to work on the muffin top. Right? It did because it bulges out. Yeah. Because when you do it oh, in that position, you get that yeah, you your get little hip bone top. muffin top. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, we're gonna pretend we're 18 year old girls with our tight jeans, mm -hmm. like down around our hips. Yep. Muffin top. Muffin top it. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, Make sure it's only going on one side. Yeah, one side at a time. One side at a time. That's why they always laugh. This is the drill segment of the video. Okay, I'm gonna start out with some just shuffle, the cool. shuffle steps. And, cool. and I do that because it just gets the ankles open, close, open, close. It just starts, gets movement going. And then it, keep them on, keeping them underneath my body, little shuffles, and that just helps create movement. And I'll start out just doing it in the traverse turn and in the traverse, and then especially where it's a little more flat, I'll do it all the way through and through a turn. As well. All right. Watch out for the party train. I think those are great. And I think that the shuffle turn um, is a really good way to warm up. Yes. Or, or, or it's a good way to, even in the morning, just get your body moving. And like I do a lot of twisting in the morning. And yes. so I'll go one foot forward, shoulder forward. And so I add a more complex movement to it, but I'm loosening my whole body up, but definitely 
feeling the ski and feeling my ankle in the boot through the shuffle yeah. is a very good wake you up and get you moving thing. And as much as I don't do drills, I certainly do that twisting stretch move every morning, pretty much every first run that I go. So I am doing drills, but it's not a drill in terms of um, trying to fix my skiing. It just but, create, it just loosening up all your joints and getting the movement. And, and yeah, providing awareness into the boot. Okay, this is what my legs feel like today. Yeah. This is what my ankle feels like today. Activating everything. Versus like what you're doing here, you're not changing your technique, timing, tempo, yeah, no. intensity, any of that. It's just no. gaining some familiarity and just loosening things up and yeah and to be able to do it i just ha i have to be balanced mm -hmm. keep everything moving keeping the feet lined up uh, still underneath my body not really big shuffles just yep. little under the body uh, yeah and i think it's a great way to find that center point yeah like to find that balance point and create a point in your body you shuffle those underneath it and you pretty quickly figure out where it is and you can go back and do it and it's not right and you go forward and do it and it's not right and then you come in the middle and you're like, oh that's the middle yeah it's a great way to feel the middle yeah, because if I got too big, even on this flat part, to do it through a turn, I can't do it. It's really hard. You can sure. do it, but it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. so what are we going to do next? So down here, a little more slope, we can um, actually even transition from the shuffle to that, that the thousand steps are just little baby steps up and down. And that is more, it's not just the ankles, but it's more fine having that center spot underneath, keeping lined up underneath my body. But it still is... Um, just having activating all those joints and getting it just have to be balanced on it totally and we can do it start out on the traverse and then maybe do it through a turn also mm -hmm. but i always start out just doing it on the traverse turn traverse and then start doing it through the turn if the train allows perfect okay now we'll see how well i do it okay. <laughs> <laughs> tough part about filming There we go. Simple. Right. Um, do you want to do the pull behind the back thing? Yeah. So this drill is just taking from turn to turn, pull at that transition behind and to the other side. I found that I don't really care which side I do it from. It's the key is just at that transition, passing behind the back into the new turn. And again, because it's it just kind of takes your mind off everything else and creates movement and unlocks everything and you're not overthinking certain parts of your skiing absolutely so i'll start on one side and then at that transition comes back behind and then to the other side now roll through like three or four just keep going through them there it is and so notice down here is moving what's going on up top is really independent but what we're looking at is the ankles and so you're making something happen in the ankles without even thinking about the ankles correct all right yeah i was trying to think wait where are my phones going what am i doing yeah what am i doing don't worry about it. you just you're doing something different yeah something different and i like to switch that drill up with pivot slips also oh yeah yeah that one it works really well I'll, I'll do pivot slips we'll do one more run where i go we'll do i'll do the pivot slips okay I love because those are yeah those are my number one. That's my my go to that one. Yep. Doing this drill and combining it with this drill. Oh uh, yeah. So one thing I wanted to briefly touch on, it's kind of a one-off thing, is when I start rolling into my turns on a flat, I'm actually pulling up my inside foot, and it's called dorsiflect in the ankle, 
to get that inside ski to trail around or to track around and to carve these first few turns. Now, I'm going to be using that little dorsiflexion of the inside ankle all the way across this flat until I either pick up enough speed or get enough pitch that then the gravity transition and I can push into both feet to make the same rolled up turn, all right? And then I'm going to do it here and I'm going to try and tap my head when I switch from the dorsiflexing rolling ankle turns to a full pressure two-footed rolled turn. And we'll see if we can see it on the on the video. But I think this is something that people, that good skiers do, but they don't necessarily talk about. And hopefully we can see it here and add this to your repertoire. Ready? So it was pretty simple. Basically, when I came over the pitch and I got speed, I didn't need to dorsiflex to pull that inside ski around anymore. And actually, I tried getting away from it a little too, one turn too early. That's where I went inside. But the whole way across that flat, I'm pulling up my toes, and that keeps the inside ski. So I pull up this foot, this ski can track around because I'm actually lifting it and pulling it through the inside of the turn. My number one drill is the pivot slip. And pivot slip is fantastic because you need good ankle mobility to do a good pivot slip. I'm going to demo a couple pivot slips right here and then we're done with the drill segment. It's as simple as that. All right. Carrie, thank you for coming out skiing with me. This is super fun. Yeah, that was a lot of great stuff. And the beauty of being able to ski it all day long, it's just like a lesson because that's what we do. So we talk all day long, a lot of talking on the lift, and then we go ski it and analyze what happened and what we need to adjust. I don't think we could have accomplished what we accomplished with a 15 minute, this is how you ski better video. No, no, it takes a lot more than 15 minutes, sadly. <laughs> I haven't found that silver bullet yet. No, me neither. <laughs> uh, I definitely yak, yak, yak too much. Uh, me too. Yeah. But then we so ski we, a lot too. And we do a lot of skiing and we ski a lot. We do a lot of good skiing. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for watching and please check out the next video.